Hello everybody, it's Friday, December 1st, 2023. It's Pastor Rick from Broadman Baptist Church, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, and I am bringing you today's Broadman Word. I want to read something to you um, from Hebrews. Uh, it's uh, from, presumably, the Apostle Paul, although nobody knows exactly for sure. Uh, but there's good evidence that Paul wrote Hebrews. Uh, I wanted to uh, discuss with you the concept of fully human. Um, we're in the season, and of course, Jesus is the reason for the season, so uh, we're going to um, talk a lot over the next few weeks about uh, worshiping him and, and concepts surrounding uh, Jesus Christ and how we should uh, probably be, particularly this uh, time of year, so, from Hebrews 2, 1, um, under a subtitle called uh, Jesus is Made Fully Human, I'll uh, read you some passages. It said, It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? a son of man that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. So, you see, um, in the beginning of this passage, it talks about humans and having everything placed under our feet and that God um, subjected the entirety of the world to come uh, to our personal uh, presence here. And um, we don't see, though, that everything is subject to us. But what we do see is Jesus, who came, who was also made just a little lower than the angels for a while, uh, who is now crowned with glory and is now able um, to be the high priest, our intercessor, our um, guide and to have sent the counselor for us to help us through uh, this portion of our lives before we are able to go home uh, to heaven and be with him and the Father forever. So Jesus then, in order to come and do that, had to be fully human. In order to be one of us, to call us brothers and sisters, and scripture says not be ashamed to call us brothers and sisters and to be the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy be of the same family of his he had to have a way to make that happen of course it's through his death resurrection and ascension in heaven but he had to have been here amongst us god yahweh god amongst us um, to be able to truly understand uh, who we are and to truly be able to fulfill um, the will of God in our resurrection through his death and resurrection. So it was necessary for Jesus to be fully human. You know, there's a very interesting sort of worldly look you can take about this, particularly um, with the proliferation of uh, abortion and abortion laws, um, sadly, uh, even up into the point of birth, you know, about life in general. Uh, if 
you were a person of faith, then obviously you believe in the power of God, God the originator of life, and he should be the only one who determines life, not a doctor or somebody's mother or, um, as I guess the modern term is now, birthing person. I will never say that seriously. They all had to come through the womb. How could any of us have gotten here if it weren't for the womb? So it was clearly a critical part of life. Um, if you are um, a secular person, you have to accept that definition. Nobody gets to life without first having been in the womb. We as people of faith can point to the importance of the womb and life uh, by saying even Jesus Christ had to come through the womb in order to be considered human. So clearly the, the womb is a very important part um, of our lives. Um, and it was designed that way by God, so much so that even Jesus, who could have come at any age, in any form he felt like, uh, came through the womb. So that's kind of a, a side subject of this particular thing. But it is important because it was part of his human experience. Um, in fact, it was critical to his human experience and critical to him being able to ultimately um, be our savior, uh, our high priest, and our intercessor. So listen, um, Jesus did not come to this earth by accident, didn't come and walk and talk and teach and suffer and die and be resurrected by accident. It was all part of God's plan. So we now, particularly in this season where we're getting ready to celebrate his birth, we now have to walk and witness understanding that it was now Jesus, because he died and was resurrected, um, glorified by God, we now live in the spirit of Jesus Christ and not of this world, so we now will be able to be glorified when we physically die because we are part of Jesus Christ. We are part of the spirit of Jesus Christ. We are part of the kingdom of God, one of his adopted children, one of the heirs to the kingdom. So we too will then someday be able to be glorified. Hey, so when you're uh, having all the busyness and gatherings and the hubbub of this time of the year, take a second, step back and look, and just realize that what this is all about is the glorification of Christ through everything that we do in, anticipate, in anticipation of our future glory, which will also be through Christ but it will be nothing of our own. It will be because of him and him having been fully human while he was here and also fully God. Listen, you have a wonderful day. I love you. I'll talk to you next time.